The purpose of this video is to show you how to make reference cards with the colors that you use. Each color is obviously different, but colors can vary even from brand to brand. So in order to be able to predict what colors you'll get when you paint, it's best to have a reference. There are books that will break this all down for you, but they may or may not be using your brand of colors. This video breaks down how to make a color swatch with two colors and all the colors you can find in between those colors and also some lighter versions of those same colors. This is so helpful to have as a reference. Everybody's got an opinion on how to mix your colors. But you know what? You just gotta do it yourself. I did it myself and I'll show you how I did it myself and you can do it yourself. This is gonna be a fun tutorial, I can already tell. Here is burnt umber, burnt sienna, and titanium white. I'm going to make this reference using my palette knife instead of a paintbrush. This saves time because a palette knife is much easier to clean. See that reference we're gonna make? You can have one for every combo of your paint. Yours! Do you see how awesome it's gonna be? All I have to do is get a paper towel and pinch around the palette knife and pull the paint off. Because of the thickness of the sides of the palette knife, I also have to wipe down the edges. Otherwise, when I use the palette knife to take a new color, the new color will become contaminated with the paint on the edge of the palette knife. Is it really necessary to exercise that degree of perfectionism? I suppose not. Starting with burnt umber, the pure color comes out of the tube and I'm mixing white to see what sort of hue it is when the value is lighter. Whoa! Did she just say what hue it is? If you add white, it's the same hue, because hue means color! It's the same color, it's just lighter. That means it's a different value. You can thank me for your art education with tuition. I mean, a comment below. There's what mixing looks like. This is how I mix with the palette knife. Here we can see the range of values and what they look like from burnt umber. It's a short range. I do the same thing on the opposite side of the card with burnt sienna. Next, I want to mix a color that is halfway between burnt sienna and burnt umber. On the first pass, I take an equal part burnt umber and burnt sienna and mix them together. But the result looks more like burnt umber than burnt sienna. This color is too burnt umber! The result is not in the middle, which is typical. When I'm looking for the middle, I want something that looks to the visual eye like it's the middle, not necessarily what I get from from mixing equal parts. Darn! Now that I've added some burnt sienna, it looks too close to the burnt sienna and not close enough to the burnt umber. Ugh, this color is too burnt sienna! Adding just a smidgen more of burnt umber, I'm getting a color that I feel is not looking so close to either of its parent colors and visually seems to be in the middle. <sighs> So here's the updated reference card with burnt umber on the right, burnt sienna on the left, and our middle color in the middle. You can see in the top section that I scrape little lines. The reason I did this is because these colors are fairly transparent. When they're applied thinly, we can see through them. I want to be able to see what color I'm going to get if I apply the paint thinly, and also what it would look like if I'm applying it thickly. I don't make the same marks in these lower colors because they have so much white in them that they're not transparent. White is opaque. I tried out for Goldilocks. Do you think I get the part? As you can see, trying to find a color between burnt umber and the middle is very difficult. It gets a little tedious making these color swatches, but you learn so much. And you're going to save paint in the long run. You can use it as a reference. You save frustration. And it's worth it. Looking at this swatch of color, it seems too dark to be compared to this one. But it kind of looks like it matches with this one. This is where it gets tricky because ideally I want them to all be about the same lightness or darkness. I did end up lightening this one a little, but I didn't want to go too light because this one's pretty dark and these seem to match too. In retrospect, it probably would have been the best thing to actually darken this one a little bit, but I didn't do that. It's okay. The more you do these types of swatches, the better you get at it.
But this serves my purpose. Here I've labeled my new swatch and hung it up with the others. I've written down the names of the colors I used there. I made note of how transparent or opaque it was, as well as the code for the color, PBR7. I was really baffled by this PBR7 because each color is supposed to have an individual number based on what it's made out of. And I was confused that these two different colors had the same code on it. So I googled it looking for a reason why and I found out that they're actually made out of the same material. The different colors come from the amount of heat applied to the original pigment. Mystery solved! Thank you Google! So here is my new color swatch added to my wall. Click to subscribe and comment below. I promise to respond like a normal person.